I stand here not to defend a good man. It's not important whether His Excellency the DP is a good man or a bad man. I stand here to defend the oath of office that I took to defend the Constitution of Kenya. And that includes giving the devil his due. When the people of Kenya, during public participation, were screaming Kufa Makanga, Kufa Ndereba, they were opposing selective prosecution. They said if parliament has hold people accountable, it should not be selective. And I stand here to look at whether this house has complied with the Constitution. Article 150, Clause 2, on the removal of the Deputy President. The grounds for impeachment are set out in Article 145. And the but under Article 145, it is purely a political process, but bound by law, especially Article 25, Clause C, which requires that somebody is given a fair hearing. So the removal of the president by impeachment on any ground under Article 145 is a grave matter that involves overturning the sovereign will of the people as expressed in a democratic election. Even more profoundly, it, in, it means that the person so removed is prohibited for life from enjoying the rights under Article 38, Clause 3, Paragraph C, to be elected and hold office, to vie for, be elected and hold office. So the constitutional bar that must be cleared for the removal of the president from office is high, the Constitution requires that the removal must be well founded in law, and that's why it prescribes the thresholds. And it must be objective. It is not a simple matter of numbers in the National Assembly and in the Senate. An impeachment is not a vote of no confidence. We must distinguish that. A vote of no confidence it's a simple matter with no standards. It's just a political thing that you make and somebody resigns from office, but he can come back and get to office again. This is an impeachment. So, Article 150, Clause 2, provides that to remove the deputy president, the provisions of Article 144 and 145 relating to the removal of the president, the deputy president, of the president shall apply with the necessary modifications to the removal of the deputy president. The constitution does not anticipate a situation whereby we apply Article 145 on the removal of the deputy president without modifying it. The, the phrase is, shall apply with necessary modifications. What modifications has this house made? or the National Assembly made, or Parliament as a collective made to Article 145 before applying it to the Deputy President. Can we impeach the Deputy President using the standard for impeaching the President? When we know very well that the President is immune to, to prosecution, and therefore the certain, certain standards that apply to him won't apply to the Deputy President. So given that the Deputy President has not enjoyed those immunities, how are we protecting him? How are we ensuring that this process is constitutional? It's my submission there's a total failure on parliament to have proceeded to impeach the deputy president without making the necessary modifications to Article 145. And we have seen the potholes we have fallen into. It's okay for the president because the president is immune from judicial processes. But is it okay that the deputy president should be, prosec it should be prosecuted using the same standard used for the president? And the drafters of the constitution. Senator Ali Roba. 
Thank you very much.